Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and continuing the topic of the examples on properties of the Fourier transform. Now, first of all, I've turned on uh, the other light, so uh, maybe you see the reflection over here. So we do not need this space. Okay, these are just written the, f the properties we've already covered. The second thing is that by the time this video is getting uploaded, it would be Ramadan. So. I need you to remember me in your prayers as well, okay? So, anyways, coming to the, the, the property number seven. Yes, property number seven, and it is what? It is the convolution in time domain. And you know it very well that if you convolve two signals in the time domain, the corresponding Fourier transform would get multiplied in the frequency domain. If I have a signal exponential of negative 40, u of t convolved with a signal exponential negative 60 u of t the corresponding Fourier transform has to be multiplied so for this we know what would it be it would be a 1 over 4 plus j omega for this signal what would it be it would be a 1 over 6 plus j omega and you can do the multiplication yourself I don't want to do it Fine, and you get to the final answer. This is the property number seven. Property number eight is multiplication. So if you multiply, yes, let me take the red color. Property number eight is multiplication. So it means if you multiply two signals in the time domain, you have to you have to find the Fourier transform of the corresponding Fourier uh, the convolution of the corresponding Fourier transform and divide by two pi. So anyway, let me take a signal x of t that is sinc square of t, sinc square of t. So how can I write it? I can write it as a sine as a sinc of t into sinc of t, right? And for this, my corresponding Fourier transform x of j omega is unknown. So what do I do? What do I do? Let me do it graphically. For simplicity right I take this as x1 of t I take this as x2 of t my x1 of t is sinc of t which means that it is a sign of pi t upon pi t so we knew for this the corresponding Fourier transform would be like this this would start at a negative pi at an end at a pi the weight the the amplitude is one similarly you have your x2 of t is again sinc of t so again you have a sine of pi t divided by pi t the corresponding Fourier transform would be again the same thing x of omega with respect to omega would be like this negative pi to positive pi the weight would be one have a look now we need to find the convolution of the two do we not know how to find the convolution and have I not told you the shortcut to find the convolution if you have two rectangular pulses yes I have told you so are these pulses of equal weight or of an unequal weight so yes they are of the equal weight so which means what that they are corresponding that the, the, the convolution would represent a, a, what a triangle a triangle right so what do I have if I convolve x1 of omega this is let's say x1 of omega this is x2 of omega so what do you have if, if, if I draw it like this this is with respect to omega this is x1 of omega convolve x2 of omega so we would have a triangle we know it definitely which would start at what? Which would start at a negative pi plus a negative pi, which means a negative 2 pi. And it would end at what? At a pi plus pi at positive 2 pi. And it would go and go. So wherever is the maximum point, the maximum point would be, I believe, at a pi or whatever. So you need, you know how to calculate it. You know how to calculate it. And the amplitude is, of course, equal to what? Uh, it is equal to 1 and how is this equal to 1 so you know that as well this is equal to a 2 pi upon 2 pi and which is equal to 1 no 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 wait for this the amplitude for the convolution the amplitude is 2 pi 
for the convolution the, the this is 2 pi where is it occurring so i have done it at simplicity at zero i have not checked it i have not checked it so you check it and i've also forgot that where would this lie where would the uh, maximum point lie or the center of the triangle where i'm, I'm if i'm I don't I don't know what to say if this I represent it as the center of the triangle right center of triangle so you check it in my video I have the video on this so where would it lie over here so I've shown it at zero and similarly the amplitude also I know it's a 2 pi I've solved it but I've not written it over here for me so how to calculate the amplitude i have a video on this so you check it over there as well i know that the amplitude is 2 pi but have a look the fourier transform would have the amplitude divided by 2 pi so you have to divide it by a 2 pi and the if i draw the final graph if i draw the final graph so that would be like this so this x of j omega would be something like this i'm not drawing the other axis so this would be a negative 2 pi, this would be a positive 2 pi and the amplitude would be a 2 pi divided by 2 pi. So this would be 1 and what is this point? So you have to find it for yourself. That is it for this property. The differentiation property. Or, or let me have, uh, you know, wait, wait, wait. Let's say I have x of t is sink of 300 t. Uh, into sink of 500 t so if one is my x1 the other is my x2 so if i have my x1 of t uh, which is so i can represent it as a 1 over 300 sine of 300 t divided by pi t so the corresponding fourier transform for this would be like this from a uh, minus 300 pi to plus 300 pi the amplitude would be 1 over 300 right similarly x2 of t would be a 1 over 500 times sine of 500 t upon pi t and the corresponding Fourier transform would be like this x of omega with respect to omega would be like this from a negative 500 pi to a positive 500 pi the amplitude would be 1 over 400 now what do you have to do you have to find the corresponding Fourier transform right the corresponding Fourier transform so what do we have to do you have to convolve these two signals and how to convert so I've told you again I have I have the same video where I show you the shortcut to find the convolution of two rectangular pulses. Now, if the two rectangular pulses are of equal weight, so their convolution would be a triangle. Whereas, if like in this case, if they are of an unequal weight, so their convolution would be a trapezoid. And and this particular this particular is your homework for you guys fine so what you need to do is you you do your homework and in the comment section you let me know what is the starting point what is the ending point what is the peak value or whatever you find in that you know, so you let me know in the comment section that you have done your homework at least you can say are done at least if you don't uh, uh, tell me the other things you can tell me are done only so that i understand that you have done it anyways this is this property the next is the differentiation in the time domain the differentiation in the time domain let's say i take a signal uh, that is uh, signum of t what is the color it's black so and property number is nine differentiation And this is in time domain. Let's say my signal x of t is a signum of t. Fine. And I need to calculate its corresponding Fourier transform, right? So we already know it, but over here, let's say I'm using the derivative property. So the derivative property says what? That the derivative of signum of t, this is equal to what? So what, what would it be? So if you have it like this, this was your signum function, right? This was your x and then for the derivative of x you would have it uh, 
the derivative of x would be like this so for negative values of time it's a constant so this the, the the derivative would be zero for positive values it's a constant so again the derivative would be zero but over here have a look at t is equal to zero it's having a jump from negative one to positive one which means a total of two units so you would have an impulse at t equal to zero of weight two so which means that the derivative is the derivative of signum function is a two times delta of t it's a two times delta of t and isn't it like this it is now what do you do you take the the, the Fourier transform of both sides right yes the derivative of signum of t is two times delta of t now if you take the Fourier transform of this so uh, this basically is the derivative so which means that uh, this implies that you have to multiply a j omega the derivative of signum function, the, this, the, the, the Fourier transform for signum function is x of j omega. But over here we are writing the derivative of signum, so we have to multiply j omega with it with respect to the properties. And, and on the right hand side what happens, you have a 2 and the Fourier transform of delta of t is 1. So you have to multiply it with 1, which means that I have got my corresponding Fourier transform x of j omega, which is equal to 2 divided by j omega and this is what we know very well we already have proved it okay the next property is the derivative in the frequency domain or it is also called multiplication by t in the time domain so let's say i remove the board for it the tenth property is the next okay now the the tenth yes the tenth property so uh, this is basically the the differentiation in frequency domain or multiplication by t so over there i named it freq, uh, differentiation so over here let's say i name it by multiplication by t so now what do you have let's say i have a signal exponential of negative a t u of t and i'm taking this signal again and again because this is a very commonly used signal and this is a very important signal the complex exponential signal so an exponential of negative a t u of t has the fourier transform one over a plus j omega now what do i do if my signal is x of t and it's t multiplied to this thing so now the corresponding fourier transform would be x of j omega in the frequency domain you would multiply it by a j and you would take the derivative of 1 plus j omega now the derivative i am a little weak in but let's say let's say we give it a try so so over here if you this is the quotient rule or whatever it is so of the denominator you take a square yes i have solved it over here for myself yes then you take the denominator denominator you take first constant and you take the derivative of the numerator so the derivative of the numerator would be zero right then you have a plus you have take the d the numerator constant and you take the derivative of this so the derivative of a, the denominator so derivative of a would be zero and of j omega so this would be a j and isn't it like this it is right so now what would I have? I would have what? I would have uh, this j and over here there I have a minus. Yes, over here this is not a minus. This is the this is a minus. This is a quotient rule of differentiation, I believe. So you have a j and it's multiplied with a negative j and downward you have an a plus j omega whole squared. So j with a j would be j squared, which is a minus one, and you have a minus over here already. So this would be a plus one, which means that my x of j omega is equal to one upon a plus j omega whole squared. And yes, it is like this. So this have done with the property you take this equation you take this as your signal and you do it by the Fourier transform formula x of j omega is a negative infinity to positive x of t exponential negative j omega t dt you get the very same thing you prove it for yourself you let me know in the comment section if you do of course I, 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 I know nobody will do it but let me say it so maybe you are the one who are watching it and you do it so give it a try at least Anyways, the 10th is done. 
Two more. The eleventh is the integration property. So now you know what. Let's say we have a signal x of t is equal to u of t. The eleventh is the integration property. So say my signal in the time domain is the unit step signal and its corresponding Fourier transform is unknown. So what do you do? You have the integration of u of t, you know this would give you an impulse, right? Or what? Yes. No, sorry. u of t is the integration of impulse. Yes, as u of t is negative infinity to t delta of tau d tau, right? You know this. And you also know that delta of t has a corresponding Fourier transform equal to 1. So what can I do in place of this? Can I not write this? Yes, I can. So which means that in place of u of t, I can write negative infinity to t delta of tau d tau. And now for this, I need the corresponding Fourier transform. So for delta of t, I know this is 1. If I have it under an integration, so this would be a 1 over j omega multiplied to the original Fourier transform, which means 1 over j omega would be multiplied to 1, that is as it is. And then you plus you have to add what you have to add pi times x of 0 pi times x of 0 so this is a 1 this is simply a 1 so which means that this would be 1 at each and every value of time so at pi of x of 0 is also a 1 and then you multiply it with a delta of omega so this would be a pi times delta of omega and 1 over j omega plus pi times delta of omega and we know this we have already prove this right so this is the answer this is the answer we have proved this in the previous videos through various other methods the next and the final the 12th is the Parseval's energy theorem or the Parseval theorem or Parseval power theorem or Parseval's relation or whatever it is but this is the last for us the 12th to calculate the energy of a signal and I've missed over here this is to calculate the energy of a signal to calculate the energy, you know this conventional formula, you can also use the Fourier, Fourier spectrum or the Fourier tool or the Fourier whatever it is. So anyways, let's say we have a signal. Let's say I consider a signal that is x of t is exponential of negative 4t into u of t and its energy, energy of x of t is unknown. So first, let's say I do it by the conventional formula. So the energy would be equal to a negative infinity to positive infinity. I put this energy uh, negative 4t u of t the absolute square dt. Now we know that this u of t is 1 from 0 to infinity and this signal would exist only at the right hand side. So I could say 0 to infinity exponential and I also give it the square so negative 80 exponential of negative 80 right and, 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 and the, the, the magnitude and whole square that's done right the magnitude is the very same thing yes so an exponential of negative 80 and then you have a dt so now what would I have exponential of negative 80 would be what it would be a 1 over a negative 8 and then you would have an exponential of negative 80 the limits would be 0 to infinity now what do you have 1 upon negative 8 exponential of negative infinity minus exponential of 0. So exponential of negative infinity is a 0, exponential of 0 is 1. So you have a negative 1. So which means that the total energy that has come out to be is 1 upon 8. The units whatever it is, we are not interested. This is by the conventional formula. If we use the Fourier transform, using Fourier transform formula so what do I have we know or you know you can do it by the uh, by a simpler formula when you are given an exponential signal so so the energy for such a signal where you have an exponential of negative a t u of t this is simply equal to 1 upon 2 a 1 upon 2a so have a look over here a was 4 so the energy is 1 over 8 we know this now we want to prove it using the Fourier transform so x of uh, we would need to have x of omega then the amplitude uh, then magnitude and then squared so what do I have 
Yeah, first, I would write x of omega. So, x of omega is 1 over a plus j omega. a is 4. So, you would have 4 plus j omega, right? Then, you would have uh, the, the magnitude of it, right? So, or first, if you square it or whatever you do is, yes, you take the magnitude. So, if I have the magnitude of x of omega, so this would be a 1 magnitude would be 1. Then, you have a 4 plus j omega's magnitude would be again the same thing. Now, if you take the square of it, so the magnitude squared, so you would have 1 plus 4 squared plus j omega squared. No, 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 no. If you have it under, you, you would have the, uh, the, the magnitude would basically be this thing. The magnitude would basically be this thing. Wait, wait, wait. This would be basically the magnitude. Right? This would basically be the magnitude of it. And now if you take the square of it, now if you take the square of it, so this square root would cancel out with the effect of the square. So you would have it like this. And now what do you do? So this implies my Parseval energy relation implies what? That my energy would be equal to 1 upon 2 pi, integration negative infinity to positive infinity and this thing is this one. So you have a 1 upon 4 squared plus j omega squared. Uh, and can I write uh, plus omega squared of course because we, we will not write the, the magnitude, right? Because, uh, yes, we are not write the imaginary part, this is only the magnitude. So, 4 squared plus omega squared and this is with respect to omega. Now, we know a formula and let me represent it with a red color. That if you have, a, if you have an integration, if you have an integration that is, uh, so this is a formula, so I will write it over here. If you have a negative infinity to positive infinity, a upon a squared plus omega squared with respect to omega, this is basically equal to tangent inverse of omega by a. This is basically equal to tangent omega by a. So have a look. I have an a upon a squared plus omega squared. So have a look. I need a 4 over here because I have 4 square over here. So if I make this a 4, I need to divide over here by a 4 as well. So, which means that my energy would come out to be 1 upon 8 pi and this integration would result in a tangent inverse of uh, an, an, an omega, omega by 4, omega by 4. Yes, and, and the limits, the limits are of course, the limits are of course a negative infinity and positive infinity. So, which means if you have 1 over 8 pi, now what do you have tangent inverse of infinity minus a tangent inverse of minus infinity. So what do you have 1 upon 8 pi 1 upon 8 pi and, and, and what tangent inverse of infinity is 90 degrees or, or I can say a pi by 2 so we cancel out this pi pi by 2 then you have a minus tangent inverse of minus infinity is minus pi by 2. So you have a plus pi by 2, plus pi by 2, you have a 2 pi by 2. So you have a 1 over 8 pi times 2 pi by 2. So this 2 cancels out with this, 2 pi cancels out with this pi. The energy is 1 upon 8 and we have proved this again. We have proved this again. That is it for this video. That is it for this video. And I believe I had one example which I missed somewhere and that is no problem. If I have a... a x of negative t negative 4 so this was a simpler example and i did not want you to do it but let's say if i have it over here if i have it over here if i have um, multiple transformations if i have multiple transformation that is if i have uh, for a for a signal x of t we have the corresponding fourier transform x of j omega now if my signal is negative t negative 4 so what would be the corresponding fourier transform now so have a look first it is shifted four units let's you prefer to do it what start from the rightmost side so the rightmost side is a negative 4 so which means first i would go for an x of t minus 4 so t minus 4 this is a time shifting property you would have an exponential of negative j uh, uh, negative uh, j omega and x of 
J omega would be the original one. Negative 4j omega because they yes, are negative 4j omega x. And now you have what x of negative t negative 4. So now the corresponding Fourier transform would be negative t. So you would only have omega replaced by a minus omega. So over here you would have an exponential of j omega with a 4 and x of minus j omega and that is it. Now I believe I have uh, you know covered all the properties but I remember I have missed one. I'm missing something I'm missing something and what is that something yes yes that is the conjugate property so that is the conjugate property and let that be your homework conjugate property conjugate property and let's say this is your homework you solve any example on it you solve any example or let me you know uh, uh, I do what I would uh, only write the property for you I would only write the property for you and what is that property so where do I have I just forgot it uh, yes over here if x of t has a Fourier transform that is x of j omega so if x conjugate of t is now the signal now the Fourier transform would be x conjugate of minus of a j omega you take any signal and you prove it for yourself through this property as I have done now I cannot you know solve any simple I'm tired if I search for it first I write and then I prove so then let this be your homework so that is it for this video now let me you know uh, mention one point you would be noticing that somewhere I'm using this double arrow for uh, this Fourier transform pair somewhere I'm using a single arrow with a double head what does this mean so this means nothing in some books we have one representation in some books we have other so I do them intentionally I do them intentionally to tell you that this is not different the meaning is the very same so that is why you don't need to confuse that is it for today that is it for the Fourier transform examples and I believe all about the continuous time Fourier transform as well see you in the next lecture maybe we continue with the discrete time Fourier transform or maybe we see first the topic of filtering I don't know whatever it is do remember me in your prayers see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you and do subscribe to the channel as well please yes do subscribe to the channel goodbye